Hey everybody, it's Strict9 with Strict9GP, and I'm back with another episode of my Draft Day Sports College Basketball 2020 playthrough with the Austin P. Governors in the OVC, the Ohio Valley Conference. So uh, since the last episode, things have been going a little better. Uh, we basically, I think the last episode we lost to Moorhead State pretty big. Well, no, pretty close, 80 to 78. And uh, like one of my viewers uh, commented, I really screwed it screwed it up at the end because um, I didn't really expect us to get back into that game. I thought we were pretty much done, but we came within two and had the ball with like, what, 11 seconds left. So I guess um, that's kind of a, a warning to you that uh, you need to, if you're playing them out like I am, it's a good idea to slow it down there towards the end because like the viewer said, I should have caught a timeout, tried to set up a three-pointer or even really a, a play to tie it up. Uh, but that was a, a big mistake. And that's, you know, it's not a guarantee that we would have won, but it would have been nice, I think, if we could have um, at least taken it to extra uh, or overtime. And, and I really blew it a little bit on that one. Although for that game, I mean, we, um, we were outmatched a lot. And unfortunately, one of the things I'm seeing with this team we're not putting it away when we have a lead and we're, we're letting teams stay too close and a lot of times like in that Moorhead State just kind of run away with it in the second half but uh, you know you, you live and learn so I had to move on from that one but after that one we we lost a close another close game to Belmont 73-77 and in that one it, once again like I said I mean we were leading at the half led most of the game I think um, there were only eight lead changes in that game, and we led at one point by 11. Our largest lead, Belmont's largest lead, was at the end uh, when they won at 77-73. So we just we we struggle putting these teams away when we're winning. So in some ways, maybe we're better than we think or than I think, um, but I, I'm not 100 percent sure what's what's going on here. But after that game, we got a really nice. Uh, win streak going. We beat Tennessee Tech at home, 84-67. We beat Tennessee Martin on the road, 78-69. We beat Jacksonville State on the road, 77-67. We beat Murray State at home, 83-74. So four games in a row that got us back respectable. And then we had a, a tough game on the road against Southeast Missouri State. Um, they're one of the tough teams in the conference this year, so I, I wish we could have kept it close. We, we didn't really um, play too close. I, we never led, I don't think, in this in this game. Uh, that's how bad it was. And I'll, I'll show you this. The um, I guess we'll take a look at the uh, standings. But Southeast Missouri State. That's one of those that was going to be tough for us to win anyway. But what it's done after that run, we're back at 12 and 11, so we're over 500. At 500, 6 and 6 in the conference. We've got six games left, and we're playing Tennessee State at home today. I thought that might be a good challenge for us. We should be matched up pretty well with them. Our assistant coach has us 51 49 in terms of uh, who's favored to win. Um, it would be nice if we could win this one, give us some breathing room down the stretch. We got three and three, three home, three away. And the away games are just almost um, assured that we're going to lose. We got Eastern Kentucky, Eastern Illinois, and Belmont all on the road to finish out the season. And just we'll look at the standings now, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So you got Southeast Missouri State, Eastern Kentucky, and then Eastern Illinois is playing really tough. Uh, they started out, uh, I guess, pretty hot in the season, but they're eight and ten at home, so that's going to be a tough one to win. Belmont, of course, eleven and two at home. They're not having the dominant season they had last year. They're eight and four in conference, but they are still, I think, the best team in the conference. I think it's it's going to come down probably to these three teams: uh, Southeast Missouri State, Eastern Kentucky, Belmont. Uh, maybe I'm not giving Tennessee Tech enough credit, but I just don't think they're, you know, I don't think they're at the same level as the other guys. Just taking a look at their roster, they have, uh, they have a few good 
three and a half star players, um, a few seniors there at point guard and shooting guard. So maybe you know this is their their last chance, kind of like us last year. They may have a good run in the tournament, but it's um, it's going to be hard to for me anyway seeing them win. So I want to take a look at a couple things too with the team before we play out this game on the stats. Um, got to get back to us. Um, I did after kind of wavering there on McKinnis, I did put him back on the depth chart so that he's starting a lot more now. And he's up to 15.7 points a game, probably still leading the um, conference in scoring. He's still upset with me. I mean, his coach relationship is terrible, but his team relationship is really good. 74, um, maybe, I don't know, maybe something will happen and uh, he'll, you know, cool down in the off season. I'm not sure. But if I look at the game logs, he has had a great run since that last episode, uh, which was the loss against Moorhead State. I had cut his minutes a little bit. He only scored 10 points. But against Belmont in a loss, he had 18, then 17, and a win, 22, 21, 23, 23. Um, playing well, even though we lost to Southeast Missouri State. Shooting is way, way better. Uh, he shot uh, 7 for 14, 5 for 13, 9 for 17. You kind of get the point. When he was going through that streak where I decided to uh, lower his minutes, 3 for 15, 2 for 14, you know, he had some bad games, but he's just turned it around, and he's looking really good. I just wish his attitude was better. Uh, afraid that uh, I'm not going to be able to, to help that much. But then in terms of the rest of the team, Jepson, you know, he's, he's a junior uh Probably the next best player ratings wise, he's doing okay. I like the fact that he's getting a lot of rebounds. Um, he hasn't looked, I don't think, all that great of late, though. I mean, uh, five, six, five points total in three of the last four games, six against Belmont. I mean, he's had some games here, like against Moorhead State, where he scored 20 points. So he's capable of doing better. I hope that he. Uh, he plays uh, better down the stretch. Mike Holland has had some good games here uh, here and there. Um, he's a two-star player with just a two-and-a-half potential. Uh, he's not a very beefy center, but six, just 6'8", six, 251. Uh, he's the best option, of course, I've got at center. And he has had, i got to give him props, he's had some, some good games here. 15 points against Tennessee Tech. Um, he's, he's a great free-throw shooter, so... He gets a lot of fouls inside, so that's good that he's getting to the line and, and converting. But um, overall, I'm, I've been pretty happy with his play lately. He even had 20 points against Murray State, uh, which uh, that was a win for us. And his best game of, of the season, probably his best game ever. And he actually, um, I think it's under player stats in the regular season. He was a player of the game, but... I think he may have gotten a couple last year, but I think that was the first time he's been player of the game this season. Uh, so he's playing well. Greg Law is still looking better as a power forward off the bench than Edwards, and uh, that's going to lead me into the next thing I want to talk about before we move on. But uh, Cunningham not really getting it done as the point guard. I'm thinking uh, of making some adjustments here going into this next game to maybe uh, help us out with that. So let's go ahead and take a look at the depth chart. What I want to do is I, the one change I've already made. I've got even Laws is not going to start for whatever reason. I think he's maybe played a little bit better uh, when he's coming off the bench. He's one of those who he doesn't really care about playing time. His relationships are great. He's a junior, um, so you know he he might develop a little bit this year. I'm not sure, but. I'm going to leave him coming off the bench, but he's going to get most of the time at that power forward. Um, weighed him pretty equally, I hope anyway, 10 minutes a quarter or 10 minutes a half. So that he's getting 20, and then Edwards is getting uh, just 18. Edwards, a senior, um, there's you know he's not going to develop. I, I don't know why his potential is still at three and a half if he's not going to really meet it, but. He has been underwhelming at best, and I think it's just time to give Laws uh, some play time and hope that this guy, you know, maybe reaches that potential going into next season 
as a senior, so he might get a chance to start next year. The other thing is, is point guard Cunningham is a senior or junior actually, uh, but he ha he doesn't have a lot of good upside. He just happens to be the best rated point guard I have on the team for current ratings. But you can see his numbers are terrible. Um, he doesn't score a lot of points, assist, considering the minutes that he gets. Um, what is that, 21 minutes a game? He's, he's under four assists. I don't really, really like that. Um, not giving you much defensively at that position. Three pointers. He's you know he, he's not he's a decent field goal shooter, but uh, not he's not really hitting the outside shots like I'd like him to. So I think I need to get. I've already got. Let me see how I've got uh, Ivory. Ivory is getting eight minutes, and McMillian is getting eight minutes. So I want to start ramping these guys up. Um, McMillian has looked just a little bit better when he's played than Ivory, but I'm still gonna, I'm trying to give them the um, same amount of minutes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put McMillian, give him a little bit more time um, somehow without, without blowing it too much. But let me, I'm gonna do it this way. I'm gonna give Cunningham the start Give him a pretty decent stretch here, middle of the of the game, and I'm going to let McMillian in or the half. I'm going to let McMillian in the half. That'll give him 10 minutes total, and then I want Ivory to come in and get a good stretch here, like kind of middle of the second half, um, and that'll give him 10 and 10 or 10 minutes for him, 10 for McMillian. It's not a lot, it's not a big adjustment, but I'm gonna see how they play in the next couple of games and then I'm gonna adjust it even further, I think. Because I think it's time to move Cunningham back out of that starting uh, role. I think he's not gonna be a, much of a factor next season anyway, so I, I just wanna try to get ready for next year. And it's just gonna be, um, I'm not recruiting a point, a point guard this year, so it's gonna be really between Ivory and McMillian who, who with those two um, probably makes the best adjustments and gets the best uh, ratings progression going into next season. Ivory still has the best potential, but um, I, need to, I need to see it in game. Uh, looking just at his last few games, he's, he's really sporadic. When he gets a lot of minutes, it doesn't seem to really matter. Uh, his best games, you know, seems like he's performing well when he's only playing a few minutes or, or, or under 10, something like that. So uh, a full game, I don't know if he's ready to take a f starter's minutes yet. Um, on the flip side, though, McMillian, I think he has had a few good games here. Um, well, it's been a while. <laughs> But I still think, you know, I, I want to take a look at him. His ball handling is, uh, let me see, his passing has is, is got a good potential, and his ball handling, eh, it's above average. So he's got an eight potential in passing, six in ball handling. And by con in contrast to that, uh, you got Ivory has an eight potential in passing and seven in ball handling. Uh, and a seven in outside shooting. So I think if he could improve his free throws, that would, that would be great. But um, we'll just see. I mean, court IQ is another one to look at. Um, I think Ivory gets the um, advantage on that too. And Cunningham, eh, he's about, potential-wise, he's about the same as um, um, Ivory Again, potentially, he's just a better outside shooter, but just not a very good scorer, so for whatever that means. But that's the adjustments that I've made. I'm going to go ahead and get started on this one. This is a big game. Well, let me go back to the stands to show you why I think this is a big game. Tennessee State, 5-7 and seven in conference. We're 6-6. Six and six. If we can win this one, you know, we're a game above 500. Might move up a spot depending on how... SIU, Edwardsville, and Eastern Illinois do. But if we lose, we're going to be tied with Tennessee State. 
in the bottom half of the conference. So uh, I don't want to go into the last six games with that record. So if we win against Tennessee State, I think we got a good chance. Now, <laughs> I keep bouncing back and forth. Last thing I want to look at is the way we're rated, uh, the way our assistant coach scouts us, we're even except for shooting guard. So we're going to just keep focusing on the outside. We're not going to change too much, at least to start the game out um, with our play sets and, and uh, focus. So hopefully it'll be good, but this this could be a big one. This this would, I think, if we don't win this one, I, I don't think we're going to meet our goal of 15 wins and, and uh, above 500. But if we win, we still got a chance. Uh, the way they match up, they've got several juniors here. One senior, uh, Ford, I don't see much play from him. If he's, uh, I don't know if he's a shooting guard or point guard, but he's, he's looking pretty good for him. And so what I usually like to do, I slow down the offensive pace a little bit, increase the crash boards. I know that I could probably set that in my strategy screen so it comes up like that every time, but I want to be able to adjust it anyway, so I'm not too... Worried about that. I'm going to leave the defensive intensity where it is right now. Uh, we have had really a lot of games this year where we get in foul trouble, and I just want to see how we start before uh, before I adjust that intensity. So they score first with a three pointer, and then we turn it over. That's Cunningham uh, traveling. Finally, get a basket. It's inside though. It's three to two. Pretty fast pace right now, and Jepson misses the shot but draws the foul. He's He's a so-so free throw shooter. He misses them both. And they missed the three-pointer. We get it back. Jepson uh, starting out pretty cold here. He's missed a couple shots. Uh, looks like that was McKinnis. He's got all. F he's got four of our six points. We're up six to three, and they hit another three-pointer. Looks like there's all six of their points are three-pointers. Holland misses inside, but he draws the foul going to the line. Hits them both. He's a great free throw shooter for an inside guy. We're up 8-6. Three-pointer for McKinnis. He has six points now. No, that was a two-pointer. Sorry, he must have been over the line. And another foul on them. Three team fouls to zero for us. And McKinnis, four for four shooting. He has eight points. Um... And a shot clock violation. So we're up 12 to 6. Good defense there. I'd like to see it like that. I don't want to have to raise that intensity to get that kind of defense. Ah, we missed a three pointer. Not sure why we would do that. And they're going for the threes, too. That's, uh, I think that's primarily how they're making their offense, uh, how they're scoring right now. They're two for four, three pointers. And Marshak blocks the shot. What happens? And, oh, they called timeout. It must have been out of bounds. And that's going to be our first foul, but it's a shooting foul. Puts him to the line. He hits one or two. Um, we're missing shots right now. Oh, big one there. Three-pointer from Marshak. And it's out of bounds to Austin P. 15-7. I think that's our biggest lead. Greg Laws makes the shot. They're calling a timeout. I'm going to go ahead and it's early, but I'm going to give this entire team some praise. Um, they don't really care, but it's a good start. I want to try to keep him motivated if I can. He misses the the one and one there, and then Holland throws it away. That was kind of a wasted possession, but we get it right back. And they're just going for threes right now. It's it's nineteen to seven. Greg Edwards misses the shot. Um, he has yet to score. And he misses the first free throw, makes the second one, 20 to seven. Another three-pointer for them, and uh, another foul on the other end. They're up to six fouls now. That's going to send Ivory to the line. No, it's not. Sorry, six fouls. Ivory misses a three-pointer, but uh, on the other end, that may have been Holland. He's up to eight points right now, and they're really cold. They're two for 13 shooting, uh, but we turn it over on the other end. We're doing pretty good uh, shooting. They call another timeout. And we get the ball back somehow, but miss a three-pointer. We're one for five in three-pointers. We probably just need to hold off on that. 
And they're struggling at the free throw line a little bit. They missed two of oh, a three-pointer from McKinnis, but they are one for four at the free throw line. A little back and forth here, but we're up 27 to nine, 27 to 11. They're starting to sh they're starting to ha uh, have their shots land right now, and Cunningham throws it away. Uh, this doesn't show me turnovers, but he has zero points right now, and I've seen a, a few turnovers from him, and he gets a foul on the other end. And they have cut the lead a little bit, uh, but a big th shot there, I think it was a two-pointer. It's an 18-point lead again. A good move inside, though, for them. It's, what, 16-point lead. And that's their seventh foul. We're going to go to the line now. But Jepson misses the one and one we're doing a good job with rebounds. Um, oh, and they've got a three-point play chance here. They do. They convert. So it's a 13-point lead now. They're seven for 20 field goals, so they've gotten a lot better here in the last few minutes. Ah, but we come right back with the three-pointer. That was Cunningham. He needed that. And they're, they're cold on that possession. Missed two shots. Another three-pointer. This one from Jepson. And Holland makes the shot. Did he draw the foul? He did. He did. So he's up to 10 points already. He's going to the line. It's a 21-point game. Once again, I'm going to I'm going to give this team some praise. Wow. I think what I really need to do is it, one of the things I've been trying to do too is is praise McKinnis individually, hoping that would make a difference in his attitude with me. Uh, man, we are 3 for 9 in free throws. Um, that's crazy. And 10-second violation, we're going to get the ball back. Right now, we are controlling this game. 25-point lead, 43-18, just under two minutes left. And McKinnis called for his first foul. 18 for 27. We're streaky, so I don't expect us to keep this up in the second half, but uh, that's some of our best shooting I've seen all year. Oh, a three-pointer from Mallet outside. 22-point uh, game. They're playing a little bit better, I, I have to say, but uh, it's still going to be a big lead at the half. They're back up to shooting, though, just under 40%. Holland is the player of the, of the half. He has had a great half. Look at that, 10 points, five rebounds, two blocks, three steals. Um, great performance from him but they they've got their shooting back up they're 10 for 26 they stopped they stopped trying for those threes that probably helped them out but two for five at the line rebounds though uh 17 to 12 to us that's good offensive rebounds uh three to one assist we've got 14 assists to their six turnovers nine to five so we're winning that battle and then uh mckinnis is having again one of his better games scoring-wise, shooting-wise. He's 5 for 5, uh, but no assists or rebounds or steals. Um, he, he, you know, I'd, I'd like to see him a little bit better defensively in the second half, but Holland having one of his best games so far. Jepson, pretty good half, even though he was 1 for 3 or 0 for 3 from the free throw line. Off the bench, I'm really wanting to pay attention to McMillian, who's looked good. Six minutes, four assists. Um, and then Ivory, five minutes, uh, but we've been playing good as a team when he's in there, uh, so that's good. Laws, 10 minutes. He's getting more minutes than Edwards, um, and just a little bit better play. Two rebounds to one, four points to, to one, so that seems to be working well. Um, don't expect us to keep shooting 63%, but hopefully we won't crash too bad in the second half. Um, and right away they draw a foul. It's going to send them to the line. He misses the first one, makes the second one. They're just three for seven at the free throw line. And we miss our first shot. That's Holland. And uh, another foul. This could be a three-point play, but he misses the free throw. And we come back with a three-pointer to give us a 22-point lead again. Uh so it's a 20-point lead. We're, we're, again, we're struggling shooting. Uh, that's we, We're we not a very good second-half team. It's a 17-point game now, 19 points after that basket from Jepson. Uh, Holland misses the shot but draws the foul. So we're 3 for 9 in free throws. We need to 
Yeah, he misses the first one, makes the second one. Four for 11 in free throws. I don't want that to be the difference here. And another foul. Uh, I'll work the referee a little bit. And they're hitting their free throws, it looks like now. Uh, and it's a, an 18-point game. So a foul. Uh, McKinnis draws a foul. How about we turn it away, turn it over? And another another basket and a foul. And it's a three-point play for them. It's now a 15-point game. And this is uh, this is where the frustration comes in with this team. They they are streaky and second half. If they have a lead going in the second half, uh, we almost always play poorly in the second half. And you're seeing it here. It's a 13-point lead now. And a, a turnover on the other end. Luckily, we get it back. Uh, but we're having a hard time making shots. Uh, we're down to 56 point, 56%. Thankfully, Laws makes both the free throws. It's a 15-point game again. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to raise the uh, intensity here. Probably going to see a lot of fouls, uh, but it's an 11-point game. And Laws makes the shot. He's having a pretty decent start to the second half and makes the free throw. So we're now 50% at the free throw line, and it's a 14-point game. Another foul. This is on McKinnis. Unfortunately, I don't need to see that happen. He's been really quiet the second half. And he gets the rebound there, but uh, pass deflected out of bounds on the other end, and we throw it away. I, I don't get what's going on here. We're up to 10 turnovers to their 12 right now. Big three-pointer from Ivy, Ivory right there. And it's out of bounds, but to Tennessee State. We're back up to, by 17. Um, now 15, and we're... Th we're really playing sloppily on, on offense right now. That was a turnover, and they throw it away, thankfully. It's a 15-point game with about 10 minutes left, and a foul on them. So we're 5-5 five, five in team fouls, so that's good. But <laughs> keep throwing it away. Um, they're going to the line. They missed the first one. They missed them both. And that's McKinnis drawing a foul, and this might be his... It is his first points of the half. He hits both free throws. I tell you, Laws is having a good game. 11 points, having a great second half for us. Ivory called for the foul. That's her seventh, so they're going to the line now. Uh, one of two, though. Can't convert. Good. That's a good series. We've got the offensive rebound. Now we're back up by 20. So a good little run there. Uh, good shot from Jepson. So got several guys with double digits and points right now. I'm not seeing much of Holland. He may have uh, gotten foul trouble. And Jepson turns it over. 13 to 14 in turnovers. So they're barely, uh, we're barely beating them in that matchup after really looking good in the first half. So out of bounds to Austin P. That may have been a block or something. Ah, Je McKinnis, another good basket. 22-point game. And Greg Laws called for the charge. That's her eighth foul. I've still got that intensity up a little bit higher than I usually play. Uh, it seems to have helped a little bit since they had that run, got within 11. And that was Holland, I think, again. He's up to 14 points, having a good game. Big three-pointer there from Holland. Um, so they make the shot, draw the foul, but... Uh, we're up by 21. It's looking pretty good right now. Four and a half minutes left. And we're going to get a foul. I may go to the stall offense, but I don't want to right now. I'm going to wait just a little bit. Holland misses that free throw. Nine for 17 in free throws. That's not as good as I'd like to see. He goes to the line again, hits them both. He's up to 19 points. He, I think he's a good bet to get another player of the game. And they, they turn it over on the other end. I think we're going to have this one now. 23 points uh, on Holland. That puts him over 20. That's his career high, I, I'm, I have a feeling. 23-point lead. 
just some good shooting. Cunningham uh, has looked better with reduced time, really. 5.6 assist. And it's a 23-point game lead still. Holland hits another one inside. I didn't think we would be matched up well against them inside, but uh, he has had one heck of a game. Ah, three-pointer brings it within 20. And they're going to have the ball back here. I would like to see us keep this 20-point advantage. And they throw it away. I'm going to go to stall offense now here towards the end. And they're going to foul. They're going to foul Ivory. He's up to five points. Got an assist. Misses the free throw. And another foul. That's going to send Tucker to the line. I'm not sure how good he is at the free throw line, but we'll see. He hits one. Hits them both. So free throws were 13 for 22. Got a little bit better there in the second half. And they missed the three. That should do it. And... Big 22-point win. Got scary there for a minute, but uh, fortunately this is one of those games where we did not let them get within uh, or get closer. But you see what I'm talking about here. They tied us in the second half. After being just so dominant in that first half, we could not keep it going until maybe late in the game we, we turned it back up. But... Um, you know, I didn't expect us to win by 40, but I would have thought we would have played a little bit better in the second half. If you look at um, how they did, I mean, they shot way better in the second half. Probably outshot us. Um, Against one of those things I wish we could see by halves uh, in the box score here. They were really struggling at the three-point line um, and the free throw line, so that helped us out. We had uh, 32 rebounds to their 23 uh, way more assists, 26 to 14. 15 turnovers to their 16, so they barely beat us on that. I, I was, or we barely beat them. I was uh, disappointed in that in the second half. But once again, Holland, player of the game, and he deserved it. 23 points, six rebounds, two blocks, three steals. I mean, two assists from inside. That's really great numbers from your center. Um, they outscored us in the paint. I expected that, but he was probably the one getting those points, although he even had a, th a three-pointer. He was two for three in three-pointers, so he's not afraid to shoot from outside. Uh, other than him, another decent game from McKinnis, although he was really quiet in the second half. He was five for five shooting in the first half, uh, but he did, did pick up a couple of rebounds, assists, a block in that second half. Uh, Edwards, not good. Um, one point, two turnovers, just one rebound. But Laws, on the flip side, he got more minutes this game, 20 to 18. That's what I was hoping to see. Um, three rebounds, three assists, 11 points, a plus 16. He's definitely, even though those ratings don't show it, uh, and it's maybe a half star in terms of that, so it's not a big gap, but... He is definitely playing better at power forward right now. Um, Cunningham, not bad. Seven assists, that's what I'm really wanting to see from him, 20 minutes. Um, that's that's a good ratio, obviously. The big question here, though, is how did McMillian and Ivory do? Ivory had more minutes, and man, the numbers don't show it in some ways, but he had just one assist, no real defensive uh, numbers there, but he was a plus 17, so the team really did well when he was on the floor, got five points from him, so that's good. Everybody got a chance to play in this game. I like to see that as well. Uh, Marshak wasn't too bad off the bench. He doesn't really contribute too much, but that was a great game, and we needed it. I mean, that was the game really that we needed because, as I said, I mean, that puts us back two games above 500 for the year we're over 500 now in the conference. We lose that one. We're not going to finish 500, I don't think. Uh, I mean, we could still bomb several of these games down the stretch, but we needed that one. So um, Holland there, uh, one of the best performance uh, in the conference, no surprise. Um, anybody else? Jepson steals, five steals in that game for him, two blocks. Um, 
for Holland that was second. But scores around the league, Eastern Illinois just plastered SIU Edwardsville. Eastern Kentucky, that's a big loss right there. Moorhead State, surprise upset. So it's it's going to tighten that uh, leaderboard up a little bit. Jacksonville State over Tennessee Martin. Tennessee Tech over Murray State. The so Tennessee Tech, that was on the road, so they might be... They might be the Cinderella-type team out of this conference. Belmont, big win over Southeast Missouri State. So that's going to really s- switch the standings up a little bit. And and right away, you can see what I'm talking about. Belmont back on top. Southeast Missouri State, Tennessee Tech, those three teams tied. Eastern Kentucky now slipping after a, a great run. I think at one point they were 5-0 and or 6-0 and in conference. Let me see how they started. So they won their first one, two, three, four, yeah, five games in the conference. They were dominating. So right now, uh, it's a tighter race, and we're just two games back. So, man, you know, if if we could somehow just turn it on here towards the end, uh, yeah, that, you know, we've won six to ten, but we've had some pretty tough losses in, in those ten games too, but... We're definitely playing better than we were. And and of those 10, I mean, we've won one, two, three, four, five of our last six. So uh, we're peaking at the right time, but we got a tough, tough team coming up next. Like I said, start the episode, the, the away games we have left are just going to be really tough to, uh, to win. If we won one of those, I'd be really happy. Um, and then if we win out at home, if we win three of five in the next, uh, gosh, five games, that would put us, what, 10, 10 and uh, eight on the, on the year in the conference, which I said, too, when we started this uh, series or started this uh, season, that would make me happy if we went 10 and eight in conference. Um that would give us what would that give us? Uh, I think 16 wins or so um, on the year. That would meet our, our goals from the board. They're expecting 15 wins, and I know they want a conference tournament. That probably won't happen this year, but they do want to want us to qualify for a the NIT. I think prestige. We started out the season at two stars, just a little bit better than conference. I think we would have to get back into the tournament this year to uh, improve our team prestige. I don't, I don't think that's going to happen too much. Well, I don't, I don't think the chances are good. So that's going to do it, I guess, for this episode. I do want to check one other thing um, just to see if, if it's trending up. And I don't know why I'm worrying too much about this, but nah, that, that wasn't enough. I guess I'll have to sim ahead to see if his attitude's going to adjust a little bit. Um, but we're on a good run. Um, I'm probably just going to do the, well, I know I'm going to do the, the next five games, four games offline, and we're going to come back and play Belmont on the road. Um, we did beat them. I think that's how we ended it last season was with a win against Belmont. It was probably at home though. Um, I mean, we could possibly do it again. We, we played them close. Uh, the last game, but if if we could uh, upset them, that would be a great way to end the regular season. But as always, I really appreciate you guys watching this series, commenting, and uh, the support you're giving me. I hope you stick with it and still enjoy it, and I will see you next episode.